Hello YouTube, or welcome in this fine day, and today we are going to have a look at the first sliver in Historic Brawl. This deck aims to win by playing a bunch of slivers, cascading them all out of the deck and just killing the opponent with a bunch of creatures. Um, very simple game plan and usually not my first choice how to kill the opponent, but this deck can have some really really explosive turns. The main problem is that these explosive turns just happen too late. They straight up happen too late and sometimes you just run out of gas. On the topic of running out of gas, that's why I run a bunch of cards that help us. Like, Realmwalker is a sliver, so that's a no-brainer, right? But I also run Tosca, I run Guardian Project, I run Vanquisher's Banner. Reflection gets us additional value. Great Henge is two mana with the first sliver on the field, so that's pretty great overall. Um, Yeah, like, you really, really, really just want those key... Like, you want to keep the cards flowing. Um, Another topic is when the first sliver is on the field, all your slivers have cascade. So I cast a bone sized sliver. It has cascade and cascades into another sliver. For example, Lancer sliver. This has cascade again. So it can cascade into a diffusion sliver. And that cascades into a one drop. And a one drop will always give us a, a sliver, will always give us a zero drop. I could play Mox Amber, but I found that card to be not impactful enough. And like it is a dead draw 100% of the time. And I feel like I don't need the extra mana. Like it's free to get out of the deck, but it can also just intercept like your threes and then just be there at the, as the next card. And you could have just gotten a two, so that's actually pretty bad, just being in the deck basically. Um, another thing is Deafening Silence is a card you can try out at one. I've tried it out, it was okay, um, performed decent. Um, if you think you, you need a Deafening Silence in your meta, run it great card to cascade into on to the mana base i run all the shocks i run all the checks i run one of each snow basic um i also run terramorphic expanse and evolving wilds to end all the triumphs to basically ensure our check lands come in untapped as often as possible i'm not running field of the dead because it, if we ever draw field of the dead we just straight up can't cast the first sliver on curve. If we and I'm not playing the wall tree because wall tree fixes our mana at a point where it's irrelevant already. Because your mana base needs to be good enough to fix your colors from turn one to five, and wall tree only does that from turn six onwards effectively. Um, so that's why I'm not running those. You could include a package with Golos Field of the Dead and um, and uh, wall tree. Oh, that's totally fine. You can do that. I just chose not to put those lands into the mana base, as the as I've mentioned before. Um, yeah. Other than that, uh, we play slivers. We don't have too much interaction because, again, we need to play slivers. <laughs> and uh, let's see where we can go with this. Hope you enjoy the games. We are ready to play against Omnath, Locus of Creation. That's a decent hand. Oh my. Yeah, that's a decent hand. I like it. Uh, I think I want to get out the Evolving Wilds tapped. Um, and I probably go red or green. Now let's go green in case the Mana with Sliver is uh, getting killed. Green, green, green. Now I am going with the Watery Grave because I, I'm not sure what comes up next and like just having the, the lands in play pretty great. Um, like the, the basic land, uh, land types. We go with the Toski and next turn we can already play our first sliver. Securitas route, sure. That's fine. Um, this first sliver. Play this a main one in case we get the haste sliver. Sure, you're free. And draw a card. Oh, and there is a sliver. Okay, Omnath probably comes down. Oh, they just do the extra turn for no reason. I mean, sure, unless they are want to play Ugin here. But, like... 
Oh, that's an interesting play by the opponent. Uh, let's see. Okay, what can Pyro of Heroes get us here? Any three drop, basically. Is there a Realm Walker? Realm Walker is indeed a card that I would like. I think I will start out with a Diffusion Sliver and hope to just cascade into a Thoughtseize effect. Like, Thoughtseize? Pretty great. And Dovin Sfido, sure. Now we can source the Plowshares Domnath and attack in with everything except the Mana Weft Sliver because that's a really important card to have around. Yep. Diffusion Sliver is pretty great. And they scoop it up, interestingly enough. Sure, GG. We are ready to play. Oh wait, I know that guy. He's on my friend list, I believe. Is he? Yeah! <laughs> okay. Let's see what he uh, has to offer here. Um, I, I think I like this. We have four of our colors. The last one being here by with Pillar of Origins. We started with an Inquisition here. Um... And I think we start with the Water Grave. Inquisition, let's see what they have going on here. Let's let's take let's get rid of the ramp. Cathartic Reunion is a great draw for them. Allows them to recycle the useless cards in their hand. Perfect. Um so now we have Yeshua, Pillar, and then Sliver, and now we play a Striking Sliver on the field. Next turn we play Blade Bag's Diffusion, and our creatures are kind of annoying to deal with at that point. Um, sure, sees the spells, they ramp more. Oh, that's scary. Uh, Yep. One, two, attack you. And what do we hope to cascade into? Uh, Toski would be a great, great cascade target at this point. Um, let's hope they don't have a board wipe. Like, they seem like Boros control, right? I wonder what this. I, I think this is designed for the backside. Ooh, interesting. Uh, we get the white here. And as you can see, our mana base is pretty... pretty resilient. Realm Cloak Giant, just as I feared. Mm-hmm. White. And first sliver coming out. Ah, oh, unfortunate. Mm, we name green in case we draw the great henge. Great henge would be an amazing call. Okay, sure. Elspeth's conqueror's death is totally fine. We can just play the first sliver again. Seem indeed seems like Boros control. Yup. More slivers on the field. And remember, if we cascade it to a non-creature, it costs two more. Ooh. Ha! Ha ha! I'm so sorry, opponent. I'm so sorry. Um, do we play this now? Sure. Decline. We can't play it. And I think we keep this. I, I don't see a 1-1 one, one, uh, being the optimal play here. Um, if they revive the emissary and name creature, um, we are just going to scoop. Yep, GG, because we've used our one removal spell already. GG opponent.
First sliver versus first sliver. Yeah, mana seems great. Everything comes into play untapped except the Triumph, which we just play on turn one. Direct escape turn two, Stirring's turn three. Okay. I think we still just. Like, the, the thing is, if we draw just land, like, we can always cycle this away. If this is a green, we're still missing blue, so yeah, let's let's go with the Triumph. And if we grab blue with the Expanse, everything comes into play tapped, and that's just annoying. Okay. Um, yeah, that's what we are likely going to cycle. Uh, sure. Oh, whoops. Don't mind me playing the wrong land here. We could have played the Dragscape for sure. They play a Diffusion Sliver. We don't mind that too much. Um, and I think we're going to cycle here. I feel like I want to get the value engine on the board. Like I don't like. Stirrings we can just play later, right? Okay, we're going to play those two next turn. And we are going to grab... What are we grabbing? The blue, another... Let's see. We have first strike, which is amazing. Um, let's just grab the white, I guess. And we swing it. Sure. Let's see. They can't play the first sliver. One, two, three, four. They only have four different colors here. The double strike sliver is winning the matchup, though. That's a really, really good card. Really good card. I think I would be happy to trade these off. Okay. Sure. GG opponent. We are ready to play against Turgrid, God of Fright. Uh, and this is the situation what I mean, where I mean, okay, we want duels because every land only produces a single color here and it can just happen that we draw the wrong colors afterwards. I still think this is pretty good. Um, this either grabs black or white here, I don't believe it should be white. I can't thought this. I realize that, but... Like, I want to be able to play the Cohort eventually. Oh yes, and that's pretty great. That's really pretty great. Now we just need to grab a red. Um, okay, they, are, they seem to intend to play the front set of Turgrid, which is pretty good for us. Eldest Reborn I'm not too worried about. Red Presence could be annoying. Bugleret is okay, I guess. Penny Bones, let's just take the ramp. I think we discard the Masked Vandal. I think that's totally reasonable here. Okay, they're greedy. I like it. Ooh, would you look at that? And I'm not going to play the... Masked Vandal, because again, I, I'm going to discard it to the Bugler Red. Let's see. They draw a card. We play a blue, and we play the first sliver. Cascading into Hive Stirrings. That's pretty great. Um, I think we don't offer the trade here. 
Our slivers getting plus one counters actually matters against cards like Heartless Act. Okay, and now we pop off. Pew pew. Oh, Cloud Shredder. And we're getting a Swords to Plowshares, and that hits the Dread Presence because that can just remove our slivers. Not the Cloud Shredder sliver because that has. Oh no, it's a 1 1 by default, so yeah, that's really good. And we swing in for a bunch in the air. Can the opponent survive this? That is the question. That is indeed the question. They bought wipe here. No, nope, they don't. I could have played the first liver again. But GG. We are ready to play against Judith, Judith the Scourge Diva. Thoughtseize. Oh, and Commander does fix a lot, right? Yeah, it does fix a lot of mana here. Yep. Okay, they're going full on aggro, as expected though. As expected, I'm not gonna lie. Um, We have most of our colors here. Ferocidon seems like a menace. Well, always seems like it has menace because it has, but... Ah, and they drew the one drop to go with it. That's really unfortunate. Okay, um, which sliver are we going to play? I feel like... We're... Only having three drops is a bit awkward, but if this game goes late, we just win, but... This game won't go late. This game won't go late. I, I'm guaranteeing you that. Bloodline Pretender, Sliver, and then we're dead, right? Ah, uh, them drawing another one drop was so crucial. So, so crucial. Oh, and their one drop tribal, I see. So, they, they should have attacked with the Judith as well, I think. One, two, three. Yeah, that's that's game. I love it. GG. We are playing against Essica. And I think we can do better. Clutch Shredder Sliver is obviously arguably the best sliver in the game. Right now. Uh, like in... On Arena. But like our colors don't work. So let's ship it. The opponent is still in the tank, if they should keep or not. <laughs> Let's see. We're still missing a few relevant slivers, like... Uh, we don't have a trample sliver, I believe. We don't have the blue flying sliver. Uh, we don't have a lifelink sliver as well. So uh, there, are, there are a lot of good slivers that we're just missing that we don't have in general. And I think they're shying away from putting in the old slivers that says all slivers on the field, not just yours. Um, so I think that's definitely a factor. That hand is much better. Uh, we only have Abzan lands, uh, Abzan mana, but like one, two, or one, two. Um, I think we will be fine. We will open with the Godless Shrine. Never, uh, we we re generally want to hold off on the pathways until it's really relevant. Like, it's almost certain that we're going to play this on green, because double green is for, like, great henge. Um, and... I mean, double black is always some... Uh, uh, also sometimes needed. Oh, that's... I think we, we can't get them out of a disenchant effect, and it's not too relevant, um, so... Yeah, search is definitely the way to go here, because it puts them off, like, filtering for ramp. So we're likely... Yeah, we, we, we're we just playing the Mana Wasp Sliver anyways, right? Who am I kidding? And then next turn we Rally plus Pyre, and I have to decide what to kill. Sure. Mana Wasp Sliver. They have the option of exiling a card from the graveyard here. That's what they hold priority, I believe. Mm 
and we we kind of fix our mana with the mana of sliver and they currently don't have black or red and those are the colors that are really annoying right uh one and I do think the power of heroes is a bit more important just putting this out there um so I will go to main phase two maybe they're impatient to um kill this before it hacks and then in main phase two I'm going to play the power of heroes sure no attacks, pyre. And I will... I... I don't have any illusions, I don't seem to have any other play than, like... Return to nature, so... Yeah. I, I do like that this pathway is effectively useless. Um, in casting Asika faster. Because they already, already have blue and green individually. So that's definitely a huge plus. And again... As I said before, we're going to cast this on green to cast the Great Henge. We also have the, um... I don't know what the, the black 7 mana spell is that has double black, so that's why I still hold was holding off on the pathway. But now that we have the Great Henge in hand, it's quite clear that we want to cast this on green. Okay, if they have a black next turn, they can go with the Prismatic Bridge, but, um... I think that will be a bit slow. Ooh, and that's a great card to have. We don't have a creature in the yard, though. Okay, let's cascade. If they counter this, I think I'm considering putting this to the graveyard so I can exile it to... Um, kill the Prismatic Bridge with it, and then it goes back to the command center from there. Okay. Let's see. We, we don't know what's coming out of this Cascade Trigger. Mm-hmm, and then we say Sliver. Toski is a great card. Great card here. Just a great card. Top deck a black opponent, that would be pretty fun. It is, don't get me wrong, it is a really risky play. Not too risky though. It's more of, um, I don't have anything else really to do here. I can go Toski draw card. I think that's the play I'm going to make. Other than that, just playing the Blur Sliver. Um, as a future mana producer, it's pretty neat. Time Warp, sure. Top deck black. Top deck black, so it paid off. Yep, sliver. Mast bandle. And we are exiling the first sliver to put it into the command zone. Beautiful! Um, if they untap a, a, uh, an unt uh, if they top deck an untap land, it's unfortunate it is what it is. Can't do anything about that. That's a pretty neat artwork. Some of the... I, I, for me, these Japanese artworks are a bit hit or miss sometimes, but I, I, I like this one. It's pretty nice. Asuka goes to the command zone. Tap land. Maybe. Yay or nay. One, two, three. We we do have the seven mana here. Oh, they have the untapped land. Uh, God damn it. Um, first sliver, go. The fusion sliver. Ooh, that's a good one. And hopefully we just kill them next turn. Uh, it's always Ugin, right? It has never been not Ugin. Uh, we don't have the mana to play the first slur again, honestly. 
They don't exile the Bloodline Pretender though, so that's our only saving grace here. Um, the Great Hedge also costs 4 mana. If we top deck any land, we can just go with the creature afterwards. Like Great Hedge, Creature, Bloodline Pretender is still in play, so we still do have an out here. If they have any form of single target removal, I think we can pack it up though. Yep, that's a 5. Exiling the bridge. That is also important to notice. Yep. This time I would I would gladly put it to command some thank you game. Sure. Ooh. Um, Toski. The, uh, it's uh, everything's exiled. Also, this was the spell I was talking about. It's six mana, but it's technically seven mana because I'm always foretelling this, right? Hmm. Ezeka as a creature, sure. To block this. Ooh, yes. Oh, uh, that doesn't do anything though. And I think we need to go face. Just draw the one card. Land drop? Sure. I don't see us winning this game with the uh, Zakama as well. No, I think that's the game. GG. We are ready to play. Against Essica. Um, I'm missing green in the sand. Other than that, it's okay. It does have ramp. We really need ramp against Essica. But like this also gets their ramp out of the hand. So I guess there's some merit in just keeping this. Because if we get their ramp out of the head, it's effectively like we are ramping because we're slowing or we're slowing the game down by the same amount that we would be speeding it up, if that makes sense. <clears throat> Next turn I think I think we lead on the Thoughtsy No, the dress. Thoughtsy is the dress. That's always one of those decisions. Thoughtsies or the rest. So I would Thoughtsies if I would be going first here. Because the, like most of the mana dog creatures. No, no, they don't they don't play mana dog creatures anyways. What am I talking about? They're Asica. Um, they would flip into that anyways. Uh, so yeah, let's let's go with the duress. Um That's not good. Honestly, I think I take the wilt here because they don't have a land in hand and they can't like oh they top deck the lands. Uh yeah yeah yeah. Sliver, sure. Pillar of Origins. Sliver, yes. More sliver. All the sliver in the world. Would you look at that? It's amazing. Okay, and we the opponent just needs to not top deck black again. Like they did the previous game. Would be great. Um If the opponent is not countering here with Essence Scatter and they draw something that they can't play. I think I'm just going to lead with um Lancer Sliver Thoughtsies. To let the first sliver stick on the field, but then the problem is that I, I don't have any gas in hand um, after the first sliver dropped. I, I still think it's a it's a decent play. Sure, essence scatter. That's that's totally fine with me. Don't play anything. Would be great. A blue social would be also be kind of annoying because that would turn on the absorb. Let's see. What are they thinking about? They can't even play the front set of Essica. 
to work towards Chandra or the Genesis Ultimatum. What do you have? Another land. It is blue though. They should have played this untap 100%. I'm not agreeing with this play. Now they can't absorb my commander. Yep, Scuttling Sliver. And next turn we can... Do some stuff. Okay, here's here's a question. How do I play this? Currently... Ooh, okay. One, two, three, yes, beautiful. Okay. If I go with reflections, and then I play first sliver after, like the sliver, first sliver is chosen afterwards, and give double exalted to everything, they can just potentially die. If I have the right cards for that. So I think I'm I'm going to I'm going a bit with the greed here. Okay. Attack you. And they can't cast the Genesis Ultimatum. The only thing they can cast is the Chandra here, but the Chandra only deals with the Scuttling Sliver. So I'm totally not worried about that. And I really want to cascade into like menace or flying with the first sliver chosen. I mean, a source to plowshares is also good at the end of the chain because that also gets rid of the blocker. And then I can just potentially one shot them. Like first sliver chosen, and that just gets like double strike into flying. That's just lethal. Like very, very lethal. They utilize the Vigilance, but true, they have to tap the Essica. Okay, I think that is game, because we are going to pop off. Anyways, uh, let's start with the Thoughtseize, honestly. Sure, and roll the dice. Cascade. Menace. Cascade into the north. Sure, and that's lethal, I believe? Black, green... We already had the green in play. We have enough white, we have enough blue, we have enough red. Doesn't matter too much. And how much damage is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Exalted is... For each instance of Exalted among 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, that's exactly the... <laughs> Beautiful! Well, not exactly the one over. And... Beautiful. GG. Oh, mwah, that was... Oh my god, that's, that's how you sliver. Beautiful. We are ready to play. Ooh, Kefnet, the old one. Kefnet the Mindful. Yeah, I do think Duress is a great card in this matchup. Seems good. Let's keep... I have not seen this guy in a long, long time as a commander. What do we have going on there, opponent? Tell me your secrets. Spell Pierce? Brainstorm? Oh, I, I do believe they should have brainstormed in response to hide their information, right? Okay. Um, it's either Maze Mind or Shark Tiff. I'm not taking the brainstorm, obviously. I think Shark Tiff is the slow and my Maze Mind Tom just gets them to their stuff more reliable. So I'm taking that. Also, Maze Mind Tom plus brainstorm can just do some nasty, nasty things. Uh, where you can just put something on top, scribe to the bottom, and then you don't even need to draw it, and it's it's pretty effective, pretty effective. 
Um, next turn, likely going to be to have Border Grave. We are missing white, right? Yeah, we're missing white. But I'm not too worried. I am not too worried. Not playing the Triumph because we have the rest of the colors already. Like, we have those colors, so just cycle it away. We have five lands. Like, apart from this, so. Okay. And there's the white. Beautiful. And we go with the Faceless Agent, I believe. Sure, Faceless Agent. Get a Predatory Sliver, sure. I think it's worth to cycle the tribe over playing the Predatory... Uh, over playing the Spiteful next turn, because having high CMCs is pretty... Um, pretty valuable because you can cascade into lower tier stuff. Also, I like how this these turns are going to play out is likely I'm going to play the first sliver at five mana, then at six mana I'm going to go with Predatory and Spiteful in that order because I am more likely to just get the right cards that I want out of this order. Like if I go with lower first, I am grabbing a one out of the deck and then the Spiteful is more likely to go two into one, if that makes sense. I'm going to follow it up with the forest here, because that just seems to make sense to me and I have to play red Let next turn. I already have double green, so it's probably going to be the correct round pathway. Um. If all of this doesn't work out, sure. Sure, sure, so be it. Notably, we can Pyre of Heroes into Toski. That is a thing that we can definitely do. They attack with both, I'm totally fine with this, because that allows us to play the first sliver here. Um, we said red, right? Red. Mana Weft, yes! Sure, attack. Next turn is going to be amazing. If we get the haste sliver, like mana with, like our slivers being able to tap for mana, and them being able to tap for mana instantly because of haste is just amazing. Wow, we're just almost dying over here. I, I think we're almost dead. Uh, I think we are dead, in fact. Because what ends up happening is they have a counter spell, right? Like, there's no way in hell they don't have a counter spell here. Okay, they we're we're living at one life. The dangerous one life. Um we are at double black, double red. It doesn't matter. Ooh, beautiful. We have to follow it up with a great hench. Otherwise we're dying. And then let's go with the spiteful sliver. Giving all of our slivers plus one plus one with the Rally of the Rings. And let's see if they can deal one extra damage to us. And obviously we have to kill them next turn, but Cleaving Sliver is pretty good at killing people, not gonna lie. We can go Cleaving, if that gets countered we can go... <laughs> wow, imagine having the one damage. Yeah, if that uh, if cleaving first, we cascade into stuff. Um, if that would have gotten countered, which it likely would have, I'd uh, assume we can go with Pyrophiros upgrading the spiteful into a all oh, the, the the faces agent most likely into a double striking sliver. GG. We are done with the games. I hope you enjoyed them as much as I did, and. Yeah, that's slivers for you. Um, it's most definitely not a competitive deck, as you can see. It lacks the speed and or interaction to keep up with other decks. But oh man, you can tell stories with this deck. Like you can always, like if something good happens, it is excellent, right? Like now I can just go out and say, wow, we went into, we went with reflections into fir uh, Sliver's first chosen, dealing 18 damage, like with a 12 or, um, uh, with a 12 exalted, and it's just, like 19 damage. It's like, 
those are the stories you can tell with this deck. Um, and that's the cool thing about Slivers. It's just lacking interaction and or speed to keep up with the more competitive decks. Hope you enjoy this deck. See you next video.